Okay, I want to tell you um, about binary star systems. Binary star systems are just um, two stars that actually um, rotate about their center of mass um, as they go through space. Um, most stars are in binary star systems. So, I mean, that these are um, prevalent throughout, throughout the, uh, the universe that we see. So, like, if my two fingertips were stars, they actually rotate around um, a center of mass as they go through space. Kind of like two dancers on a dance floor um, spinning around holding hands and they're not they're really orbiting around their center of mass as they go. Okay so let's take a look. So I have um, two stars M1 and M2 and let's say M2 is bigger than M1. If M2 is bigger than M1 then the center of mass of this would be like right here, maybe. It's closer to the M2. So let's call this distance R1. And let's call this distance R2. Uh, it turns out that the period, the time it takes for this to go around once around its, its center, is exactly the same as it takes this to go around um, its center. And so that that has to be the case. That's why they're always opposite of one another. They have the same period around their center of mass. Otherwise, they will they have to be at opposite ends. And so that's how they go through space. And so the period of this around the center of mass is equal to the period of this around the center of mass. The circle that this one's going to go in is going to look like this. Yikes kind of, R2, and this will go, this is actually going to go in a bigger circle, you know, something like, like that, you know, where this is R1, and so um, this is how you, you might do this then, you, you can just, let's just take M1, you can say that you start out with Newton's second law, if it's, we're assuming circles here, and we'll we'll start out with the second with the um, second law of motion. The acceleration of one will equal the net force on one divided by the mass of one. That's Newton's second law. Well, the acceleration of one will be equal to v one squared all over the circle it's going in r one. That's a circle. That will equal um, capital G. Now the, the force on M1 is going to be M1 times M2. And now we're not going to divide by R1 or R2. Do you see that their distances apart are M1 plus R2? So the R that's going to get squared down here is R1 plus R2 squared. So that's the net force divided by the mass, and the mass will be of M1. So that's how you solve a binary star system. It's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. In fact, um, it, it becomes much more simple if M1 and M2 have the same mass, then you can, there's, there's some things that you can do that, that are, um, make the problem much more simple. You'll see this, you have a pro, you actually have a problem like that where the masses are the same. So that means R1 is equal to R2 and it just makes things a little easier. Hey, what about um, this one? How will the, what could you say about the M2? Well, M2 should equal, the, the acceleration of two should equal the net force on two divided by the mass of 2. So that would be V of 2 squared um, divided by R2. And that, that's the radius of the circle it's going in. The force, the net force on 2 will be G M1 times M2. And the distance between those two is still just R1 plus R2 squared. 
and then let me box that so you see that that's just a force and then um, that's going to be divided by m2 so there you have it let's uh, cancel out this m2 and that m2 hey up here let's cancel out this m1 and m2 oh uh, shoot m1 this m2 is still there and so that's how that's how you do those All right, uh, I know this is a short video, but that's all you need to know about binary stars. All right, I will see you in class.